Hello again, everyone. Welcome back. In this technical analysis of the stock market video, we're going to take a look at the NASDAQ 100 today. First, we'll take a look at the side by side of the industrials, the S&P, the NASDAQ 100. Then we'll take a look at the industrials and the transports like we usually do. And then drill in and take a look a little closer at the, at the NASDAQ 100 and uh, see what is it doing from an Elliott Wave perspective. And how is the NASDAQ composite? Uh, reacting to here. Everybody talks about, you know, what the Magnificent 7 and the NASDAQ 100 is doing. Well, we haven't talked much about the composite. We'll check in on that. And then I want to look at those five uh, Magnificent 7 that reported this last week. Apple, Amazon, Alphabet, Meta, and Ma Microsoft. And let's take a look at what happened. Okay, so the uh, Dow Industrials up 545 points for the fourth week in a row, continuing to surge, continuing to push to the upside in here. We don't have any divergence on the RSI. You could say we have a little bit on uh, on DI plus, but we're not getting it on DI minus. S&P 500 up 67.6, four weeks in a row, continuing to push. Whatever divergence we had has gone away. And, you know, that is the risk. When you look at divergence, until you get a turn down, you don't have a specific pivot point to, to validate it. It can disappear. And in this case, it has gone away at this point. Uh, and the same thing, we don't have it on DI plus or DI minus. The NASDAQ 100, fourth week in a row. This was up 222 points. And uh, same kind of thing. You can look at the RSI slightly higher than what happened back here in December in terms of the reading that we had in December. So that is the side-by-side -side picture there. Let's take a look at the industrials and the transports. So the industrials continue to push higher, but the transports at this point haven't done that. If you look at where the cursor is over in the industrials and look at where the cursor is here in the transports, so the, the, the peak that happened in mid-December in the transports uh, has not been taken out here by the transports, at least so far this year. It was down 101.5 this last week. Uh, and, uh, you know, the moving averages are, are somewhat aligned to the upside. We'll see if it's just going to, you know, pause and regroup and push higher and get in sync with the Dow. But I must say, as of this point, the, these two are not quite in sync in terms of what's going on. Um, let's take a look at the NASDAQ 100. All right, let me go back over here to the home screen. So here's the 100 that we just looked at, the daily on Friday, up 298 points. So the Friday price action bailed out the week, up 298, up 222 when you round it over here. So we're continuing to push to the upside. Let's just take a look at that weekly a little bit more. Here's how that bigger picture looks. You know, this was the uh, was the all-time high that occurred back in November of 21. And of course, we, you know, went slightly above it here in December, pulled back. And then over the last four weeks, we have pushed uh, fairly solid, you know, much higher in here, fairly solidly higher. Easy for me to say. <laughs> Anyway, uh, let's uh, let's take a look at the Elliott Wave picture that we've got on this. So I continue to label this as an ABC expanded flat or irregular correction. It's kind of six. You call it that goes by both names in here, and you call it an irregular correction when the B wave goes beyond the beginning of the A wave in here which means it punched above the all-time highs right in here. So now, where are the targets that I've got? For this B wave, my first target is up here where it's 123.6% of A, and that's at 18,747. And if it pushes beyond that, the next target is 20,089 on the NASDAQ 100. We'll see what we get. We'll see if it continues to push in here like this. Now, you know, Back over here, we did like nine weeks in a row. So there's no telling uh, how much longer for sure it's going to push. And when we look at the daily in here, 
here's how this looks. Now, this uh, right now we've got this uh, two little pullbacks that we've got in here. And I've really got this labeled like this right now, as of right now. But it could be that this is all just one, you know, the first five wave move that's going on. And then we get a pullback and then we go. So there, right now I'm labeling it like this. This is what it looks like to me. And then we might get an extended fifth wave that stretches us up into the 123.6. We'll see. So that's kind of the picture. The other thing I wanted to look at or show you is maybe yeah, I do have it here. So here's where they cluster. When you look at waves within this zigzag, within this Y zigzag, again, WXY is connecting two corrective patterns, in this case, two zigzags. So here's the zigzag of ABC. And I know we talked about this last week. People commented, you know, you know, I'm not sure we like the B wave. And I'm like, yeah, it's not the greatest B wave, but I can't seem to, you know, nothing else seems to fit at this point in time. We, this does not fit to call this, let me, let me label this right here, to call this wave one, wave three, wave five, because this wave is shorter than this wave, and this wave, I've already measured it, is stretching beyond the length of this wave. And this can, if this is a third wave, it can't be because it can't be the shortest wave. So I'm staying with this wave count. And when I look at this, and you look at where, where are the Fibonacci relationships for C, well, 61.8% is kind of the next target. Well, look how it, it kind of clusters right in here with the 123.6. And C equals A up here, almost right on the 138.2. So it's going to be really interesting to see, do we continue to push higher? And if we do, how far do we go? Do we go right up into this little cluster here? Or do we push beyond that? So that is the picture we've got on the NASDAQ 100. Let me go back to the moving average view here. Let's take a look at the NASDAQ composite. So here's what it's doing. Let's just go to the weekly view, a little bigger picture. So we haven't pushed above that November 21 high yet, but we're getting we're getting close. You can see we're right up just we closed 15628 when you round it 15629 and so we're less than 600 points away from taking out the all-time high also in here. So not quite in sync, but you know, the NASDAQ composite is a much broader index too. I think it's got something like over 2,500 stocks in it, uh, all, all the stocks on the NASDAQ. So interesting picture. I, I'm labeling it the same way. I'm looking at it the same way. Okay, let's take a look at the five stocks that moved this, you know, earnings announced this last week that are in the Magnificent Seven. Let me scroll down here and let's start off with Apple. Okay, so here's the picture with Apple. So on Friday, down $6.57. No, wait a minute, I've got, a, that's the weekly, sorry. There we go. I was going to say, I didn't think it dropped 657 on Friday. Down a dollar one on Friday. What's interesting is they came out with earnings Thursday evening, right, after the market closed. And they always release them at 3.30 Central Time. So they open it the next morning. They open below this little support level here. Now, I've got 18017 because that was the low that was achieved on January 5th. Right here, the low on the 17th was uh, 180.30, I believe. Yeah, 180.30. So for all intents and purposes, you know, we're very close. So it's almost like they trapped the bears with this move. You know, you gapped it below the support, and then all of a sudden you just bring it right on back, hardly any follow through, and you bring it right on back inside the Keltner channels, these dashed lines of the Keltner channels, we close back inside in a very strong looking type candle. Now, it wasn't up on the day. Uh, you know, we'll see whether or not we continue to get more movement to the upside. 
I think the thing with the weekly chart, it, it is down on the week, 657, is that it looks like it's kind of chopping around a little bit, like it's going sideways. And, you know, it's really hard to say. I mean, when you look at, you know, the longer term trend line, the 55 week, 55 day, it's been trending up, but we have we got a mixed picture for sure. I mean, here's the 10 day, here's the 21 uh, day. I mean, it's just we've got a mixed picture short term. We'll see how it flushes out here over the next couple of weeks. But that's the picture on Apple. So it was mixed. It was, you know, it's what I when I call, talked about this uh, last week, we were talking about what were the trends that these um, particular stocks were experiencing. And this was very much a mixed picture. What about Amazon? So here's the March 2020 low. OK, and here's the all time high that was achieved back in July of 21. OK, and it hasn't taken out that high, but it sure looks like it's making a run, doesn't it? it with this push that happened this last week up 1269, pretty big push. Pretty strong trend that's going on. Let me get back to the daily right here. Here's what happened on uh, on Friday up twelve dollars and fifty three cents. Huge explosion on huge volume. The trend was solidly up on the daily chart and on the weekly chart. And this one just exploded on the, with the trend. So it's going to be interesting to see. Does it push above that prior all time high up here at one eighty eight sixty five? OK, that's the the price action on Amazon. Let's take a look at Alphabet, which I always call Google because that's still its ticker symbol. And when we take a look at that, the daily, let me pull that over. Up a dollar twenty two interesting price action on Friday, kind of a potential reversal candle in here on the price action. We'll see if we can. Do you get follow through in here? Now, it didn't engulf this. This candle for thir from uh, Thursday was an inside slightly down candle. I would have liked if it was truly a big a bullish engulfing candle. I would have liked to have seen it engulf Wednesday's uh, body on here, but it didn't quite get that far. It's still a pretty big move. I mean, what was the range? Uh, $6.12 from high to low. So here's how it looks on the weekly chart. And when you look at this, here's that March 2020 low. Here's the high that was achieved with this huge volatility that occurred January 30th of 22. And 151.55 for intro week high. We snuggled above that just barely the prior week. And then here this last week, here's what happened. You know, we came down. But we still still riding above, still closing above the 10 week moving average. Uh, we'll see if this is going to reverse and head north. The other thing that's interesting about this, the last time it had earnings release right here. Look at the gap down. Look at the gap down three days. Now, granted, this got below the Keltner channel, three days below the Keltner channel, then it closes back inside and pushes all the way to the top. Three days down, we'll see, do we get a push? The Keltner channels all the way up here around 152, the top of it. Uh, and the other interesting thing is, you know, the 55 day moving average, a rising 55 seemed to have caught this. Yeah, I went below it, but then you know, it's right where it opened and then it closed well above it. It has had a tendency in the past. And, you know, nothing's perfect. You could see where it catches the 55 at different times. So it'll be interesting to see what kind of follow through do we get here on Alphabet on Monday. And then Meta. Wow, of course, this has been all over the news. The explosion in Meta was just incredible, historic, up $80.21 on Friday on huge volume. The volume, 84.7 million shares. And when we take a look at the weekly chart, what a turnaround, huh? Here's the March 2020 low. And it had gone one of the few, If I think it may be the only, mm, 
I'm thinking one of the others maybe got below the 20 day, the 20, uh, the March 20 low, March 2020 low. But for sure, these guys did. And then look how they flipped back above it and have done nothing but put the pedal to the metal to push higher and now have exploded above that high. It happened the week, you know, the prior week. And then here's this week. Pretty amazing move up $80 and 85 cents. Did I, uh, so we got weekly. Did I have that right over here? Yeah. So $80.21 on Friday, almost the entire weekly move occurred on Friday. So that's that's a pretty big expansion. Oh, the other thing I think, oh, that, the, here's the other thing that I noticed. Look where the RSI is. It's very overbought. But sometimes when you get, you know, something so extremely overbought, it's an indication of, of very, very much continued strength in that move. We're sitting, now granted, I use a 10 bar RSI. We're sitting at 90.7. This is the strongest weekly RSI that I have that I've, uh, that on this since it's the stock's been trading. You know, you go back, the next strongest RSI, none of these are at 90. They're not even close. You got to go all the way back here to September of 2013 to get an 89.0 RSI reading for the strength of that move that happened. So... It's going to be it's going to be really interesting to see what kind of follow through now. You know, maybe it continues to push higher, but that's a hell of an expansion. You know, you talk about the market, you know, expanding, contracting, expanding, contracting and kind of oscillating back and forth. Well, that's a heck of a heck of an expansion. All right, let's take a look at Microsoft. This is the last one. So here's the picture with Microsoft. So everybody's like, well, you know, Microsoft kind of, you know, disappointed. Well, wasn't too bad this week. Uh, I mean, Thursday was a big down day. Of course, the Fed, you know, the afternoon on, on Wednesday. Did I say Thursday? Wednesday. That's Wednesday. And, and But then look how it came right back on Thursday and Friday. And on Friday, up $7.44. And again, Friday salvaged the week because the week was up seven twenty nine, and Friday was up seven forty four. So pretty interesting price action in here. This just continues to look and act like it wants to push higher. It's getting it's getting extended. All of these are getting and pushing, uh, pushing up uh, in terms of overbought territory, but we don't have specific divergence. Okay, it's just not there uh, right now. That doesn't mean something can't develop at least on the weekly. Okay, when I'm looking at that, but here's the prior high. Here's the March 2020 low. And we have continued to push above that. So, you know, strong trends in place. We'll see how much further do these want to go. Um, that's the picture that we've got at the end of this week. If you felt like this video was helpful, give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber to this channel, hit that little subscriber button. And if you'd like more of this information on a regular basis, head on over to joehenches.net. Check out the website, check out the membership. Everyone have a great week. We'll talk to you on the next video.